It is a long road and it is very hard. I've seen him behind the scenes. I've seen the hard work he's put in and here we are and this is the moment. And so it can't, you know, it can't not um, pull you in and, uh, you know, jerk a tear here and there. I do sometimes dream of being in space. Sometimes I'll wake up and I'll tell Amico, hey, I have this dream I was launching on a space shuttle or the space station. And sometimes there are people with me, like she's been with me in my dreams, my kids have. But in reality, while I'm up there, most of humanity is 250 miles below you. If anything goes wrong on Earth, you're not coming home. For decades, human beings as a whole, and Americans in particular, have been talking about going to Mars. As long ago as 1969, after the Apollo 11 moon landing, people were predicting Americans would be on Mars by 1975. It has been a dream deferred for half a century. Getting to Mars requires multiple systems in NASA to be working at once. The system that's the most fragile and destructible of all, however, is the human body. It's the one we didn't invent. It's the one we're stuck with. If we plan to get to Mars, we have to figure out how to make that biological machine survive in a place it was not built to survive. Scott Kelly has been working toward this mission his entire career. He's been working toward this mission his entire life in some respects. He knows what it's like to have a football field size piece of $100 billion infrastructure in his control. And now he's going back for one year to run one of the most important biomedical studies NASA has ever run. Yeah, but what you miss is the people and then the, um, the weather. It's kind of like, the weather was well, it's going outside. You know, you it's never, you, there's no sun on your face. You never feel this on my feet, this fire. You never feel this cold breeze. It's always exactly the same. So I had this Texans hat and it was completely faded and stained and it was the best hat ever. And then I lost them. So I went and I 
place. Bought two of the exact same hats. This one's gonna go to Kazakhstan with me. But then I took the other one and I screwed him to the fence over there <laughs> and he's gonna be exposed to the Houston weather for a year. And he's gonna turn back into old Smokey for me when I get home. You're gonna come home in a year later and you're gonna see or change something too. <laughs> I hope not too much. <laughs> we'll figure it out. When the first time, like, I actually had an interaction with you at work, mm. you know, you came in, and I thought, I, it was so weird to me now to think of that I couldn't you tell You thought the, it was my brother? I, I couldn't <laughs> tell the difference between the two of you, which is weird to me now, because yeah. I'm like, I can tell when you're walking away. Like, I know exactly who's who. Yeah, we used to look, I guess, very much alike, to some extent still, I mean, for people who don't know us. And my mother used to dress us the same. Now look at these old pictures, you know, with you know orange shorts and a striped orange shirt and a bow tie. When we were little, we had like our own secret language. You know, we did almost everything together. You know, I remember laying in bed one time in the morning and talking to my brother about how we were going to build an airplane in the backyard. You know, we just, at five or six years old, we figured we could do that. Like, we had the skill to do this. Obviously, we didn't. We didn't get very far with the airplane, or later with the spaceship. You know, I think twins tend to be a little bit different. You know, I think their relationship is different than just siblings. is doing any kind of a comparative study between my brother Mark and I since we're identical twins. I call him much more when I'm in space than I do on Earth. Uh, and it's because, you know, you, you just feel like you're so far away, you need to try to maintain some kind of a connection. I'll be probably more excited for him than anybody else. You know, I've flown four flights. This will be his fourth flight. You know, for my, my mom's passed away, but for my dad, you know, to have, you know, gone through this whole experience, you know, eight times now, and that's a lot. Throughout history, people have done things that are risky. So, even though it is a risky thing to be doing, and I think it's a lot more risky than some people might think, it, uh, in my mind, is worth it, uh, even if, you know, the unfortunate and tragic thing was to happen to, you know, myself and my crewmates, I still think it's worth it, being part of something that you feel is larger than yourself. Yes, yeah, so like it's gonna be a long year for me, I'll tell you that. Dad, I can call you from space and harass you just as much as I can harass you over the phone here. You don't have to worry. Okay, thank you. <laughs> you have your tunes, your headphones? Mm -hmm. this morning that was funny and I told you don't say that yet. God. Even what are you talking about? When I said you just, oh you said he's when you said goodbye bed. Goodbye bed. <laughs> goodbye bed. I'm gonna miss your silky smoothness. Should I show you how the remote works? I think I got it now. I think I got it. <laughs> We're on our own. It's I need to jump in the shower real quick. Okay.
Hello, Scott. Hey, Gabby and I just wanted to say, bon voyage. How do you say that? Bon voyage. And uh, you know, we know you only have a couple more days here in the U.S., and then you're gone for I don't know, like five years or something. Right? <laughs> do you know what it is? How long? Oh, one year in space. Hey, Dad. I just want you to know that I'm really gonna miss you. You've made so many sacrifices over the years for Charlotte and I. You helped me become the person I am today. Hi, Dad. I like to wish you good luck on your trip. It's exciting, and you're going to be working. But remember to take in the view. I love you, Daddy. So, you know, people ask me, what am I going to do? And I always just say, you know, I'm going to just see how far love travels. Oh. Love goes far. We want to know how long a year is. It's 31.6 million seconds. It'll be 31.6 million times you're on my mind. I said to my brother, I'll be in space and flying all the way around the sun, you know, one lap in a year. And he's like, yeah, so will I. The rest of us will be doing the same thing on Spaceship Earth. I, I get the question, how does it feel to be the daughter of an astronaut? And you know, he's been an astronaut since I was one years old. I wouldn't know anything else. I can't compare it to anything else. So, you know, everybody's like, oh yeah, it's so cool. Your dad's a your dad's an astronaut. He's going to space for a year. And for me, I'm like, yeah, he's my dad. <laughs> you know, he's my dorky dad. One who gets mad at me if I don't do my homework or, you know, if I don't come home on time. He's still my dad no matter what his job is. And, you know, he's a great one at that. <laughs>